Yeah, that's the good stuff right here. Hard, soft literature. I mean, sort of, kind of. I tell you what, I think I'll think I'll check it out. You know, I'm not normally one to destroy books, but so I'm just kind of big for it. Hi, you folks. Fruit and Doggy here to do another book discussion, and today I'm discussing Rainbow in the Mist by Phyllis A. Whitney. Funny enough that this dark cover is showing up better on the recording than more light covered ones I've tried to show. This book is about 200 pa uh, 280 pages long and was published in oh, was, there it is, 1989. <coughs> Excuse me. And as always, we're going to start off by reading the summary of the book. And it's kind of reversed. It has a preview part of the story on the back and then the summary is on the inside covers of the oh, uh, jacket. <coughs> Excuse me. Christy Lauren has come to fear her gift of clairvoyance, an unwanted legacy from her mother, a famous psychic. Without warning, visions envelop her, visions that have guided the police too late to the bodies of murder victims. To escape these horrors, Christy flees her home in Long Island to seek peace and safety in the foothills of Virginia's Blue Ridge Mountains in the reassuring presence of her down-to-earth aunt. But she finds that even more threatening mysteries await her in those mountains, mysteries that surround a writer's recent death and the disappearance of the unearthly, enigmatic Deidre. Christy senses secrets locking the heart of Deidre's tormented husband, with whom she fears she is becoming too emotionally involved and haunting Deidre's troubled son. Caught in this ominous web, Christy must come to terms with her unwanted psychic powers. As she is drawn to the search for Deidre, she sees with increasing clarity that the mysteries have a connection to a blood-chilling dream that haunts her. In trying to escape her fate, she has unwittingly embraced it. Now, to uncover the truth, Christy must confront her gift of precognition and her dream. The shocking truth will bring her face to face, face to face with real and terrifying danger. And since there is a preview on the back, I'll go ahead and read that as well. The moment had come. She went again to the long red tiled room and walked directly to the bookcase, where for a moment she stood with her eyes closed. When she had time, it was best to go down inside herself and achieve a mild trance before she touched anything from a missing person. The quivering had stopped, as it always did when she emptied herself and allowed whatever pressed in to come through. Now a deep inner, inner stillness possessed her. <coughs> Excuse me. Behind her eyelids, colors flashed yellow and green against deep black. She reached out with both hands and picked up the scarf. The silk seemed to twine about her fingers as though it were alive. Shockingly alive, so the very touch of it seemed to burn her skin. She wanted to drop it and run from the room, but she made herself stand where she was and let the scarf flow through her hands in a stream of white fire. The impressions in her mind came thick and fast. A sense of horror that she had never before felt seemed to throw, ugh, flow through her veins. The intensity was far stronger, and it was different. A appalling sense of evil, of wickedness. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this book is a mystery that includes <coughs> certain aspects of the supernatural, psychic abilities, and uh, abilities of that sort. And starting off with the story, I would look at the main character, <coughs> the protagonist. She, as she flees from where she settled down, she reconnects with her aunt, who she's always been close to. Her mother, <coughs> as a psychic, as somewhat of a celebrity, she's smothering, especially since she always pushed her to explore her psychic abilities but for her they're always just kind of terrifying and horrifying and throughout the book since she's uh, long suppressed this ability since she's denied it 
she doesn't have any control over it. It's not refined. It's not fine-tuned. And so throughout the book, she wrestles with this. She complains about it. And it becomes somewhat annoying because I'll mention as well that in total, depending on how you count things and uh, depending on what uh, degree of control and strength of the ability that there is, there's about four to seven characters throughout this book who have some degree of a psychic ability. <coughs> and my main complaint about that is despite all of these characters who allegedly have all these powers, and I put it that way out, who have these powers, none of them are able to figure out who is committing the murders where one of the bodies has wound up they can't find any of the clues they just they're completely inept so despite so not only are they incapable of solving this mystery through logic deduction finding clues uh interviewing and discussing matters with people even with the added element of their psychic abilities and you know her mother is supposed to be a really prominent really powerful psychic eh, nope they can't do it they just can't figure it out and the antagonist <coughs> excuse me they are purported to have a psychic ability but I'll have to go into spoiler Terry I'll have to explore this and explain other issues first but Excuse me. Th this is insufficient explanation as to why they would uh, be stumbling and uh, their efforts would be so frustrated by them. This character's psychic ability is not sufficient cause. So it's it's just really annoying, at least from my point of view, to have a character to have all these characters have this supposedly great. Uh, powers to find out more information to go beyond just what the clues are to get sensations and visual images and you know kind of like a radar in some case but oh it always falls short it always winds up being completely help or worthless <coughs> and i mentioned the alleged part because one i'm very skeptical about the whole notion of psychic abilities in the first place but even with the mother who supposedly is completely credible who is fully fleshed and truly has this ability when it shows her uh doing a tv program the way she spoke the way she presented herself really and even some of the comments she made at times really suggested that she was just a really shrewd ho uh, huckster that was all just a hoax but overall I guess with the narrative and how everything is presented it is all supposed to be genuine and the uh, real deal and I don't know whether being uh, fully vested in believing in that or being a skeptic and disbelieving I don't think that really matters in this case. It's a work of fiction. <coughs> I'm willing to suspend uh, my personal opinions on the matter for the case of a good story, but I just don't think it was a good story. And I will mention real fast that at the end of each chapter, it took the point of view of the antagonist and they would make various comments about events that have been going on, uh, kind of exploring their motive, different actions they were taking to try and frustrate the efforts of <coughs> in their perspective meddling neighbors and nosy people getting in where they weren't supposed to be but taken as a whole as you read the whole story these comments and the antagonist mindset i don't really get it it doesn't uh, fully add up and I guess at this point I'll just start throwing out a general spoiler mention because I have to explain the uh, the 
the meat of the story, what happened, to showcase all of the inconsistencies, the plot holes, and just what didn't make sense. And with this mystery, I thought there was enough hints to suggest that a couple of other characters who wound up not being the culprit, that, I mean, you could call those good false leads, <coughs> but the problem I have with that is that ultimately, the actual culprit, I don't really think it makes sense. I don't think there's enough, there's definitely not enough to make that connection and make that leap of faith. Uh, now there's technically, as I look backwards in the story, it's like, okay, I'll admit that there's a few breadcrumbs. There's a little bit to suggest in that somebody, it kind of makes sense or it sort of adds up, but in essence, what happens is one character is found dead at the very beginning. Later on, another character is found dead. <coughs> they get murdered later. And in between, there's a character that is kind of on the fence. We're not really, as a reader, you're not really sure if they're dead, if they're missing, if their spirit is living on, and they're just coming back trying to leave messages for people if the culprit really disposed of the body very well and they're just kind of standing in and mimicking the person themselves. It wasn't really clear at first, but as it turns, well, ultimately what happens and the explanation is this, Deidre is the one that was missing and she was, Kind of, I would describe her as somewhat as a very bizarre, free-spirited, somewhat of a hippie-style person, but very naive, childish, a bit impulsive, a little bit uh, maybe mercurial or bubbly would be another way to describe her. <coughs> and what happens or what uh, was going on is that her body, or uh, when she was born, seemingly uh, it was supposed to be twins, and then she absorbed the other twin's body into herself, and the spirit of that second unborn twin, the one that didn't develop, is kind of her opposite. She's really nasty, she's spiteful, jealous, hateful, and they possess the same body. <coughs> And <laughs> I mean, I can appreciate this idea within a setting where psychic abilities are uh, maybe they're rare, but it's real. But again, there wasn't enough in the story leading up to that point to lead somebody to reasonably conclude, oh, that's what was going on. I saw, I saw that coming from a mile away. <laughs> and this story does not at all give enough explanation for how those events were taking place because if this if these two spirits were inhabiting the same body how did that split work were they shifting back and forth did they have like a tag out tag in system and what makes this worse is what the story shows is that Deidre is more or less more or less kidnapped. She's being held prisoner. And it doesn't really make any sense. Because if you take that all as well that was, you know, taking place inside the body, then it just begs the question, what happened? that led to this occurring all of a sudden because she's married, she has a son, and from my best interpretation, the second spirit was ticked off at her because she denied that she had a sister, which she didn't really have, but she kind of did. And I just didn't really understand what this second spirit was upset about. What was she wanting? Was she wanting uh, Deidre to tell people 
Well, uh, you know, as a child, as I was developing in my mother's womb, there was a sec there was a twin that I absorbed in my body, and I'm going to introduce you to the second spirit to the spirit. This is my sister. Go ahead and come out, and then she shifts personalities. The other one comes out and takes control and's like. Hey, I'm completely different. I'm having in the same body. And then she gets shipped off to the nearest nut house because she's got multiple personality disorder. Or I don't think it's schizotypal personality disorder, but the diagnosis changed in the DSM-5. But either way, <coughs> just, I don't, I just don't understand what this, uh, this, antagonistic spirit was wanting or expecting <sighs> and I get the whole idea that in theory they're able to tag in tag out she was the more dominant personality so she was able to constrain Deidre when she chose to do so I guess but one Deidre does get enough motivation and willpower to break out and take control again to swap places and there really wasn't a strong cue as to what uh, gave her that burst of willpower and determination to do so <coughs> but then I mean since they share the same body that's not really a psychic ability and yet this uh, alter ego, this other spirit of hers, it kept bragging about how, compared to these other people with psychic powers, hers were legitimate. She held real power, but that's all that she ever did with it. That's all that's ever shown, is that she just took control of the body. That's, I don't get. I keep saying I don't get, and I don't understand, but that was my whole problem with the book. And there were other moments that I didn't really care for in the book. For instance, the character that gets off right at the very beginning, she she was a book author, a children's book author, and she drew pictures and made uh, you know like 10, 20 pages worth of material that were talking about the different people who lived out in the country, her neighbors, and it was very. Um, pessimistic it was they, it basically caricatures of them and for whatever reason she drew them as llamas i suppose maybe this was a way for her to de-stress and cope and of course she'd want to keep that well hidden but uh, i will mention she's married and she could have kept that in the attic she could have just hid that away nobody would have ever gone up there her husband uh, basically ignored the place entirely, had no interest going in the attic, and <clears throat> that would have been the perfect place to hide it, but instead she gave that to one of the neighbor's kids that she was close to, even though the contents were disturbing, wildly inappropriate for a kid, and again, wasn't gory, wasn't sexually explicit or anything, but still not the sort of stuff you would give to a kid to hold on to. And that's part of the story element is that the second, the alter ego is desperately trying to get those pictures because that's part of the reason she killed Rose. <laughs> is she got ticked off at her somehow aware that she was hiding some sort of secret she maybe had some dirt on her but she wasn't clear in the details and even if she had ultimately those pictures wouldn't have given anything away that would have hurt her at all but <laughs> you know it's just a big misnomer and a misleading element basically <sighs> but yeah I mean I probably went all over the place with my book discussion this time. I apologize for not being a bit more organized, but this story was just a mess with the protagonist and so many characters having these psychic abilities that were basically inept and 
more or less worthless that the main character kept complaining it's like oh i hate these abilities you know they ruin my life and they're driving me crazy and now that i want to use them and now that i want to help people i'm still incompetent and i still can't do anything and complain complain you know it just got really aggravating after a while and a mystery element with an ending and a conclusion a who done it that you would never logically make that connection make that sort of leap especially since the other i would say two possible culprits were much more realistic much more logical i think that if either of them had been the actual culprit in a more grounded logical story that it would have been a better it would have made a lot more sense it would have been better but that's just my interpretation I would overall say that this is a burn it book I mean I'm, I'm not one to get salty or aggravated about a mystery that I didn't figure out as I read it I mean that happens I don't really care that much but when it's that much of a leap when it's that much of a turn your brain off and get rid of all logic because there's no way you can ever figure that out then you know forget it <laughs> But anyways, that's my view. That's my take. Um, I'll see you around, folks, though. I'll see you around, though, folks. Bye.